Hey guys, today we're going to make a whole song using only a roll of toilet paper. Let's do it. This is what I'm going to be using to record the actual sounds with the samples. This is a ST31 by Sterling Audio. It's like a condenser mic, pencil condenser mic. So the sound comes out here, actually goes in here I should say, rather than on the side. So it's going to be pointing at the sound instead of coming at it from the side. Here's my laptop that I used to record with, just a standard laptop, nothing crazy about it. Uh, it has a pretty big screen for a laptop, but it's not as big as that screen, which is really just a TV, a cheap TV, so it's not that impressive either, but it's a lot bigger and easier to work on. Uh, we have, of course, the instrument of today. Um, everything I'm recording is going to be going through this audio box. It is made by PreSonus. It uses the same um, software that I use. Um, I use these speakers. You can't see that one. But these speakers right here just to listen to everything. And this is what uh, Studio One from PreSonus looks like. You can see I've got the title of my song here. Next thing you see is going to be recording the samples. Alright, so first thing I need to do is bring the video into Studio One. So to do that, I need a little button right here looks like thing. Click on that. I'll click the plus sign. I'll bring up all the video that I want this one. I'll make this a little smaller just so I can see what's around it. And then you can play the video on its own. I am going to click this button right here. Which lets me export the audio separately from the video. This button now is in stereo, that's why there's two mines, there's a right and a left side. I'm going to make this into mono, so it's all in one stream of audio, so there's two separate streams. Lost my thing again. Alright, so it's processed, you can see it's one stream now instead of two. These little blips over here are where the sound is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, figure out which sounds I like, um, and what I can use them for, kind of keep in mind what I can use them for as I go. Alright, so now what I'm doing is I've got all the sounds that I like, and I don't know what I'm going to do with all the sounds necessarily, but I like all the ones that I've got, so I'm going to go through and take the ones that I like, like this bass drum sound, put them all on a separate track just so I can keep track of them a little easier. Our sounds figured out now. <coughs> the hard part, once we get all that done, is figuring out how to use them. So, I like to use the MPOP player, which is like the sampling instrument that's already in Studio One. It's over here. It's already got dialed up here. So that's here. Um, this will make this a little smaller for you, but it doesn't seem to want to do right now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hit and drag these in here. Right now you can see I dra drag this first one, this bass drum one. I'm going to click it in to or drag it into this first box. And now I'm going to click this. I've got a bass drum. I am going to use this little keyboard in just a second to show you how to do that. But first, let me get some directions on it. Alright, uh, going back to my phone camera. What I'm using to put these uh, MIDI notes in is this keyboard right here. This is a uh, MIDI keyboard, MIDI controller keyboard from Line 6. It has 25 keys on it, some different options down here. You can change the panning and the volume, you can change the octave, you can change the pitch a little bit with the uh, pitch wheel, modulation wheel, does different things. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to use it, it's connected with a USB, this cord right here. I'm just going to use it to play some of these notes. So to do that, I have to go back into the program. I've already got hooked to my computer. Go back to the program. And I'm going to um, test.
tell it that I want to use this particular keyboard. So here, I can turn off the, the computer laptop keyboard. I'm going to go to mobile keys, which is what this is. And you can see it's popping up over here. Now it's popping up right here when I hit that note. I'm going to go up an octave. So now, when I hit that C2, it plays a bass drum note. And it is a little bit, um, we call it latency, it's a little bit late on the sound, but that's okay. It's now on this screen here, you can see the picture of the sound itself. So if we wanted to, we could actually shorten the sound. We just drag that over. So it just plays the first part, but I'm going to play the whole sound. So I've already done kind of that with my regular editing. Figure out where I put my snare here. Well, my snare didn't make it on here. Let's find the snare sound. So now I've got the snare in there. Do the same thing with this one. I put the other snare in. That might be a better one, actually. Alright, so going back to my keyboard, I've got bass on that note. I've got the B below it, so I'm going to reassign this. So this E right here. Oops. So I've reassigned that to E. I think, I think I'm also going to reassign this one to E, so they play at the same time make it a little punchier. I'm going to play this bass drum at the same time as the other bass drum. This shaker a little shorter. And I'm going to put this on, change that this was played on to G. So I can go. Now I can play things together. Um, I can adjust all these sounds a little bit later on, but for now, Let's put these in. Alright, so going back to the beginning of our whole song here. Make some MIDI notes. Alright, so I've got the MIDI note drawn here. I just made a long a long series of, of MIDI space. I'm going to oops, I'm going to double click, which means that this little uh, table down here. This shows me several things. I'm going to get rid of this for right now. It um, shows me what instrument it is over here in my sampler. It shows me where the instrument is on the on the staff and I've got it set up to measures right now. Uh, so not the staff but the time. It shows me where the, measure, where the note is on the time over here. So I'm going to just write in some notes. I'm going to grab the pencil and let's see I've got the bass drum. And I'll just do Bass and snare, so snare down two, and on four. So here's what this rhythm sounds like so far. Let me turn this off. Alright, uh, get my shaker going here. I just click and drag that. Take off the other other one.
Alright, so, so far we've got a beat that sounds like this. Uh, pretty basic, but it'll work for now. So we're going to add some more instruments to it. Let's browse. Let's add sample one. So this is just a sampler. Um, we're going to find one of these pitch ones. Unmute it. find that one pitch one that I like. That one. Alright, so throw this back up. Drag the pitch into there. So now we've got this pitch here. And all I'm doing is still playing this I'm playing the same keyboard. But this, it raises or lowers the pitch depending on where I put the keyboard. So, um, let's loop some of this. We can set the loop to here. Nope. So, we're at the beginning here. I'm going to record this in. It's a little bit different, so I'm just going to record it in using that drum track, and then it's not going to be exactly correct, but I'll show you how to fix that in a second. So that sounded rough, but part of it is because it's not quantized. So I'm going to select it all, and I'm going to hit quantize. Um, this is going to set to the near its sixteenth note, so all these notes don't look exactly right. There's a little bit of a delay from when you play it to when it actually shows up. So all these notes that don't look right, I'm going to hit apply, and it's going to snap it to the next, the closest sixteenth note. So hopefully I'm close enough. one. Let's solo it. Okay. Alright, so we got a beat. A little bit smaller. Copy this. Paste it. Let's take another sample here. We're going to drag in the other pitch that I like from earlier. This one, which is this one here. Drag that in there. So now we've got this. I'm going to try a loop here and see what it does. Alright, so I've got this pitch. We're going to experiment a little bit. We've got this pitch here. I can use it like that, but it doesn't hold out very long and doesn't sound very good. It's a pitch and I can move it around, uh, but I don't like the way it sounds all by itself. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn the loop on to sustain so that it's going to hold it down however long I hold this note. 
it's going to bounce with selection that's right here on the top. So I'm going to make this smaller like down here. And I'm also going to make this smaller. So this is the selection of the entire loop. So this is way down here. So it's only going to play this chunk of this whole sample. Right, so now I've got that sound. Let's move it a little bit. So now as long as I hold it, I get a nice synthy sound of just this tail end of the sample. So we're going to use that. It's going to be our synth sound. Let's see if we can do the same thing to this one before we go on. Get a better sound out of that. So I'm going to loop just the tail end of this. Alright, so leave it up an octave for now. So now, when we play this back by itself, bump it up an octave. So transpose 12, try this again. Alright, so now it's just too short, which is okay, we can deal with that. So I'm going to select all. Drag the end of it out. And I'm going to adjust these a little bit. Alright, so now I've uh, changed all these notes. Basically, they're touching the next notes a little bit longer. So up here, it looks like that. This one. Um, down here it looks like this, so I'm going to play through it so you can see it. Cool, and I just repeated that four times to make it easy. Now back to this one. We've got our sample in here that we are playing on. Uh, now it's out of pitch compared to the other one, so we're going to pitch it down a little bit. So when you make this shorter, you make it a small section, the pitch goes up or down. So you're going to have to adjust a little bit as you go for that. So we're going to start here on this one. Uh, and I'm just going to improvise some chords here. I know it starts with C, and what I have is C minor. like we're out of space. Alright, so I'm going to go back in here. Just going to adjust the endings a little bit so that they are where they need to be. Alright, this is the part where my original audio cut out a little bit. My computer is having a hard time dealing with the microphone. So I'm going to do like a voiceover here to try to explain what I'm doing on the screen. Um, right now I'm just listening to everything that I've already written and I'm trying to make sure that all the sounds are good, all the notes are in the right spot, all the pitches are correct. Um, I'm also adding a little bit to the drums. This thing I just dragged over is a uh, basically a sound effect. It's kind of an amplifier simulator. So it's try I'm trying to make a different sound on the synth. Uh, and on the drums. So I'm trying to make the drums a little bit more crunchy and we're going to try to change the way the sounds uh, of the synth are so that they're a little bit less electronic and more like a melody, more like a melodic instrument. So I'm selecting a preset right now with guitar pedals, virtual guitar pedals, uh, changing the pattern a little bit, changing what order they're in. This is automation, which means it's just something that happens automatically over time and you can kind of set it up and draw pictures basically of how you want the sound to change. 
Um, so you'll see here in a second, I'll start drawing some what look like triangles or pyramids. That means the sound is going to go up and then down and then up and then down based on wherever I put these dots. So in a second, it's going to happen uh, in time, so you can hear what it sounds like. Hopefully you can hear that. The filter was opening up and closing, so it made like a more, from a more closed sound to a more open sound, then back down. You can also hear some kind of a, um, it's called a phaser effect. Um, in the background of that, so we're trying to change the sniff sound. This is an equalizer panel, I'm trying to make the drum sounds a little bit more natural sounding, a little bit less electronic sounding. This is the bass first. So you can hear when I choose different options, the dots and the color lines bring out different parts of the sound, different frequencies. effects of the synth in the background as well. Um, now I'm going to work on the drums. Same thing with the equalizer, same idea. I'm trying to bring out different parts of the frequencies. So I'm going to add a drum bus, which means that the two drum channels I have are going to be together on that channel right there. Um, so basically anything I add, I want to add to the drums, I can add to this bus. It adds it to both drum channels at the same time. Um, and I can also control the volume for both drum channels at the same time, instead of trying to add everything to each individual channel and match them all up. So I'm going to add some uh, equalizer to it first, some EQ, and I can adjust the sound a little bit on the EQ to make sure it's what I want. So you'll see the dots change and you hear the sound change uh, when it comes back in with the actual drum sounds. What I'm doing now is just listening through. Alright, so I've got a sound I like in context. I'm going to add some more stuff here. Um, now this is the mixer, or the main mix channel. Um, it's kind of like a bus for all of the sounds that are happening so far. So everything I've got recorded goes through this channel. And a long time ago I made a master mix um, of effects that I'd like to use. So I'm going to drop that on there now, on this master uh, bus. So everything goes through here all at the same time. So all these effects right there are going to be dragged over. And they're all going to be applied to all the channels at the same time. So you can hear in a second, you'll hear the difference between on and off. Um, if I turn all the effects on or all the effects off. Here's off. And here's on. You'll notice in the bottom left corner of my screen it says performance with a little blue line. That's how much CPU power it's taken up, which is a lot right now. Um, so you might hear it start to glitch some. These are all different uh, reverbs. You can hear them change. And reverb is basically like an echo. So if you are outside yelling, you can hear an echo based on your voice. It's not the same as delay. So delay is the same sound copied back, um, but echo is just the same sound as it's fading out over a large space. So now I'm importing or exporting my song so I can listen to it. And there's a cut that you probably couldn't see, but I jump back in. I'm changing some things after listening to it. I like to listen to things on as many different kinds of speakers as I can. Uh, car speakers, headphones, different kinds of headphones through my phone speaker. Uh, I'm going to automate some more things here. You can see the automation I did before. The automation that I'm adding right now is for volume, and it's to open up a filter that goes across um, and kind of makes the sound go from closed to open sounding. So both those things are going to happen at the same time. I like to add automations that make sense to add. Some of them don't make sense, but some do. Um, so if it makes sense to add it, I try to add it at, after I've got everything already finished off as far as adding notes. So right now I'm not going to add any extra notes that I can think of to the song. So uh, I'm just making things work well together, making it sound good together. sound going up. That was that what that stair step picture was in the middle of the automation for the stairs. That was the sound that went up from left to right in the headphones. Adding some <laughs> Alright, 
that was the synth lead sound, like the solo type sound I want to add. Um, I'm changing a little bit the lining up the notes, where the notes don't line up as far as the beats go, because usually when you play stuff in, like I said earlier, there's latency, which means it just takes a second between when you play the note and when it actually happens on the screen and when it gets recorded. So all you do when you go back in, if with MIDI, you can go back in after you make the sounds, after you play the solos out, and you can adjust where the timing is of everything is. So basically I'm just adjusting to make sure everything is lining up with the beat. Without further ado, I give you Wipe the Fears Away. Enjoy. Thank you. 